Welcome guys to another Blender tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple felt material in Blender. We're going to be making a procedural material and then on top of that we're going to be adding two particle systems. It's as easy as you can get and I'm going to be keeping it super simple. I've been using this felt shader for a few of my character projects and it works pretty well. I think you could probably do it better if you use some more advanced setups and stuff but I'm trying to keep it simple. I think this kind of look, even though it might look 100% like real felt, it just has a nice look to it. I really like it as a material. So I'm going to get into tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. And by the way, if you guys want to check out some of my Skillshare stuff, I'm going to put a link in the description below. I've got some awesome courses on there and you can actually get it for free for one month if you are if you haven't been on Skillshare, if you follow my link. So you can decide if you want to stay after one month and you're not obligated to do that. So if you want to check that out, it's free. Um, feel free to check it out. So let's get into it. So go on over and jump in Blender. I'm going to be using Blender 3.0 as a demonstration. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to just be selecting the default cube that just comes with Blender. And let's just go over to our modifiers and let's just give this a subdiv modifier. And let's just give it something like 4 in the viewport and in the render let's just make it something like 5. If you don't want that just to be as a modifier you could just you know apply it but I'm just doing this as a demonstration so I'm not really too worried about the modifier. So if that's still active, just right click and then go shade smooth. So now we have a nice smooth ball, just makes a really good object for trying this out. So let's grab um, just the other two items and let's just delete them. So just these guys, X and delete those two. Hit one to go into your front orthographic view. So in our front ortho, as you can see up here, we're gonna go shift A, let's just add in a camera. And let's go G, Y, move it back. And I'm just gonna go to my camera settings, make it a focal length of 120. And I'm just gonna go to my output and I'm gonna make it 1080 at the top on the X resolution. And now I'm gonna go G, Y, and just move it back. Now if we hit zero, that camera active, we can see this, right? So, you know, just position your camera, something like this. It's just a good little uh, setup for testing this out. So let's go, um, first of all, let's go to our renderer here. Let's just make the render cycles. We're gonna be working with cycles and let's go to the device. Let's make it a GPU and let's also come here to the denoising render and let's make that optics. So that'll work really well. By the way, if you don't have a GPU, don't worry about it. You can still do it with CPU, it'll be fine. Uh, GPU obviously does render a little bit faster. Okay, so let's add in some lights, right? Shift A, let's just go, let's keep it simple. Simple area light, move that up and let's just go to our light settings. A uh, size of 2 works really well for this and I find that 120 is a good strength on the watts here and we're going to go Z, render it and let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's nice, but let's just go to our right ortho by hitting free, rotate it a bit and move it back and this is actually going to be acting as our rim light. So I really like rim lights when it comes to testing this sort of particle stuff. It just helps the little particles stand out, especially towards the edges. So you can select both those lights in your front view, you can go shift D and then R and just have it like that. So now, you, you know, if you go in your camera, you see you have this nice lighting there. But what we can also do is just grab one of these lights and shift D to duplicate it, rotate it in towards the bowl, whatever thing here. And now you can see we have that. So that should be fine, right? We don't have to overcomplicate it. Let's go Control B or Command B. In camera view, click and drag over the camera and that actually just limits the render to the viewport. Um, at the moment, we don't really have a scene or any other items in our in our viewport so it doesn't really like interfere too much but if you have like a really large scene just having like it more restricted to the camera view for rendering it really helps just free up your computer a little bit and just makes things run a little bit smoother so let's select our ball over here and let's just go over to our shading works now by default it already has a material because we used our default cube so just make sure to go into your camera view hit z and then go render it and you can now see your ball. So let's go to work here with the principal shader. It's super simple. Let's start by getting a generator. So we're gonna go shift A and let's just go over to our textures and let's just add in a noise texture. So we're just adding in a basic noise texture and that's gonna be generating our textures. Let's go color and plug it into the base color. You see here we have that. Now what we do wanna do is add in a texture coordinate. So we're just gonna go shift A, search and just type in texture and let's get a, let's just scroll down and get that texture coordinate. And let's just take the object and plug it into the vector. And now it knows how we want to distribute it. And let's go to the scale and let's just make it something like 12. Now, obviously this depends on what you're working with. So keep that in mind. If you've got a you know, different size 
object, especially if you haven't applied the scale, you may have to tweak these values a little bit more. So, you know, something between 12 and 15 works good. Now, by default, it has this kind of rainbowy effect. We kind of don't want that. So let's just get a color ramp to make that a black and white value. So let's go Shift A and just click Search. If you just type in color, you can get a color ramp. Just simply place that one on this cable here, the noise texture and the principle, just right snug between those two. And let's just drag the values here closer together, just to make it a little bit more contrasty. And you can see this is what we have here, but let's also come here to our detail and let's up that to nine. And let's also come here to the distortion and drag that up as well. So we kind of have something that looks like that. And then you can come here again, just kind of tweak these. Okay, don't overdo it at the moment. Let's grab these two notes here, G to move them over. And now we're gonna go Shift A, search, and let's get a mix RGB. So grab a mix RGB and place it here. Just make sure the color ramp actually goes into the factor. And now you get these two colors here. So I'm gonna make the top one, um, let's just make it slightly grayish. And the one underneath it, we're just gonna make even less of a gray. So what we can do later, instead of messing around with these, you kind of have your contrast set here, but you can come over here and then adjust these by making them different colors. And that's how you can control your color, okay? So for now, we just have this here. And let's come to the roughness and let's up that because felt um, does not have a lot of reflectivity. Now, obviously in and of itself, this doesn't really look like felt, but it's a really good base material to help us when we... So now let's go over to our particles. And while we have this sphere active, simply just click on the plus and we don't want it to be an emitter. So let's just click on hair click on advanced and with the hair length, um, short is gonna be the best here. So let's make it 0.1, okay? Maybe even shorter, so make it 0 0.05. Nice and short like that. So these, by the way, are just our parent particles. So at the moment that's set to 1000, let's make it 600. And just to make things a little bit more efficient, we're not really gonna be seeing behind the cube here. So let's go to our face select and just select the back face. Go to our particles, Go to our object data properties over here and let's go to our vertex group, hit plus, and then just, just in fact, select everything and then just assign that. Then just select the back face and then with that group active, just remove it. So now if you go over to our particles and we go down to our vertex groups and we go to density, we can select that group. And now in object mode, we're not having it, we're not having any particle placement because we didn't select those vertices to be active or added to our group. So back into camera view, and let's now come over here down to the children, and let's make it interpolated. Now, by the way, just all the parent number is here, the number here, that's our parents. It just means instead of having to, you know, like work with every individual hair, having kind of like this parent to child relationship just allows you to have these parent particles, and each parent particle will be generating a certain amount as you can see over here. So in the display, that's just what you see in the viewport. The final render amount is usually higher. And the reason we don't set the display amount to the same is then it'll just be insanely dense in the viewport, which isn't really gonna help you. So make sure to set the render to something like 60 and the display amount to something like 30 should be fine. Don't overdo it to start with. We can still come here to this hair length and just make it even a little bit less. So nice and short. And now let's go over to our render here and let's just come here and enable B spline. That's important. And also under the children here, we wanna come down to roughness. And we wanna make sure this doesn't just look perfectly straight. We wanna give this a lot of roughness. So come here to the end point value, drag that up and then come here to the shape, drag that up a little bit. And you can see what's happened, it's randomizing that a little bit. And we also wanna come here to the random for the size, but don't mess around with that too much. We're gonna do that with the second particle system. So now if we hit Z and we go rendered, we can see this is what we have so far, okay? Don't worry too much about it looking a bit sparse because we are gonna work with that later on in the final render. So let's just go back into solid view and I might actually just go to the, the children amount here and bump it up to 45, um, just because my computer can handle it. But if you're working with a laptop or something, you could just keep the display amount low. As long as that render amount is at least 60, that'll be okay. So I'm also gonna come here to the viewport display and just make the strand steps free. That is also gonna make it look a little bit better in the viewport display. So now we have that working out. Let's go over here to our particles. And if we were to actually just render this right now, I'll just quickly give you an example so you can understand. If we were just to render this, you can see very clearly that it looks 
very uniform. There's not all these little hair, scraggly hair bits coming out, which really kind of is something you see when you look at felt. And that's what we're trying to go for. That's what we're going to be creating a second particle system on top of this to kind of help with that look. So let's just um, hit escape to stop that render and close this window. And what we're going to do, instead of doing all of that hard work again, we're simply going to come here with that particle system active. We're going to drop down here and go duplicate particle system. And then we're going to click on the second particle system and just click that little two. That's very important. Now that's its own particle system, and let's just call it 2. So that's our second particle system. And what we're going to do, we're going to come to this number here for the parents and make it 120. And we're also going to come to our children. And in the viewport, let's make that 12. And in the render, let's make that 20. Okay, so that's what we have there. And now if we come over here up to the length for that second particle system, we're going to go to the hair length and just increase that. And now you can see we have those second hairs like that. So now, if we quickly give that a test render, we should see the difference. Okay, so you can see now that's looking quite a lot better. It's got a bit more of a fluffy feel to it, but it still doesn't look quite like felt. So what we're gonna do is just adjust a few things. So with the original particle system, okay, make sure to select the original particle system. We're just gonna come over here to the length and make that hair length even shorter. And we're gonna go over to our children here and under the roughness, we're going to increase that roughness here at the top. So drag that value up over here. Not too much, just a little bit. And then also this one here, the endpoint value. Okay, there we go. And hit Z, go render it, and let's see what that looks like in the viewport. Okay, so let's just put the uniform here to the ununiform to zero. And let's now grab the second particle system. Let's come up here to the second particle system and let's just make it less. So I'm going to make it 50. And I'm going to come here to the children. I'm going to make it 8 in the viewport. And let's just make it 8 as well in the render. Okay, so let's have a look. Z, render it, and let's see what that looks like. And let's just also come up here to the length for that second particle system and just make that a little bit shorter as well. And let's also just go down to that under the children, let's just go and increase that endpoint value here as well, just to make it a little bit more scraggly. Okay, bring that rough, the hair length down just a little bit. Don't overdo it. Let's have a look at that. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. Okay, let's give that a test render quickly. Okay, we've made it just a little bit too short there, so let's just quickly grab the first particle system. Let's just increase that hair length just a bit. And we're just going back and forth till we get it just right. Okay, so the length is a little bit better, but we just still need to, with that first particle system, just come down here and increase that. For some reason, I've set it down to zero at the end point. Let's just make sure that's got enough there. Okay, that looks a lot better. So now let's just give that a render. And there you can see we have a much better looking felt material here. And it looks really rough, like it's not as smooth looking as felt, but this is kind of like really close up. So if you were actually applying this to something like a model, you'd be seeing it a lot um, further away. You wouldn't be seeing it close up like this. So the scale here is quite small, but that is looking like a much more realistic felt material. So now what we can do that we have this felt kind of established. We have that felt feel. We can now go and just try out these colors. So let's just go into our rendered mode here and let's just try out some different colors. So I'm gonna make it maybe like a nice green and grab this bottom one, make that like a green, almost kind of similar. And let's just, I'm also just gonna to go to my particles, grab that second particle system, and I'm just gonna increase the length just a little bit. And then I'm also gonna come down here to under the children, under the roughness, and just bring that endpoint value down just a bit to maybe 0 0.05, so it's not quite as intense. And maybe I'll bump the render up to 12 over here in the display and in the render as well. Saturate that green a little bit more and let's just bring this roughness, bring this roughness value down just a little bit. Okay, let's give that a render. And there we have it. That is our felt material. It actually looks a lot better now it has some color to it. But you can kind of get the idea. This is how we can really simply and easily make felt. So um, if you guys have found this tutorial interesting, I'll make these blend files here available on my Patreon so you guys can check it out. It's just a simple, simple felt material. So I hope this has been a useful thing. I hope you guys are able to use it for some of your projects. And um, yeah, that's it. Really, really simple to make a material like this. Um, I'll see you guys next time and have fun.